What's up XRP family? Thank you guys for joining the video for today. We have some interesting videos here that actually show you guys why XRP and Ripple tag is really the one. Again, more proof, more evidence. And this is actually, you have to understand what is happening here. Because this lawsuit that we are in for almost two years right now is not just coincidence. Nothing is coincidence. You have to understand they are following a script. They are following a plan. Don't get discouraged by seeing all these negative things in the news about crypto because crypto isn't going anywhere. It's literally the future, guys. But you have to understand why and what is happening. So here, for example, we have FAM in China, a tech firm's polit political influence holds back needed regulations, kind of how Gary Gensler is doing here in the United States. Now, you have to listen carefully because here they show actually wh what the CBDC in China is actually doing and what is happening and when what went beforehand before they actually released the, the digital Juan before they released it, there was someone similar like Gary Gensler holding back regulations. Let's take a look. I had this picture of Jack uh, holds back needed regulation. I had this picture of Jack Ma giving his infamous October 2020 Bun Summit speech where he criticized the regulators that led to this huge crackdown on the technology sector. But what people don't realize, but if you read my book, you'll, you'll see, is that he's tried this gambit multiple times before and succeeded. In 2013, 2014, he's able to go above the head of the central bank to neuter payment security regulations that would hold back QR code payments. And that's something that policymakers are really uncomfortable with. Uh, at the same time, the global backlash against large technology companies and concerns about their effect on competition and privacy led some of the advocates of allowing tech in to have second thoughts. And meanwhile, the people below the Politburo Standing Committee of the Communist Party, especially Xi Jinping there in the middle, decided to move things towards more of a status direction. And of course, that is going to conflict with a disruptive model of private companies. The tension that the China had to deal with was retaining dynamism while reining in some of the excess in this system. Uh, in this process, they had some really hard earned lessons that I think are important for us to pay attention to as we think about how to develop finance in the US and elsewhere. One is that it's really hard to tell ex ante what is a true durable innovation. There are going to be failed innovations. And in the financial sector, failed innovations are much more costly than in other sectors because you don't just have you know, VC investors and startup employees losing out you have regular people losing their savings. And that's what we had with peer-to-peer -peer lending and many failed uh, initial coin offerings. China ended up putting the genie in the bottle, but at a cost that democracies could not stomach. So uh, I stopped advancing the slides, but uh, there's a picture here on the right of a, a set of buses in Beijing, which are creating an involuntary tour of the city for people who want to protest the collapse of these peer-to-peer -peer lending companies, which they assumed were supported by the government. And uh, they're getting bussed off to black jails and deported back to their home, uh, home country. That's what was needed to maintain social stability after some of these collapses. And that's what would not work in the, uh, in the United States or other places. So the rest of the world can learn from this experience and take the things that worked in China and uh, not do the things that did not. See, so this is very important. He says, that we can learn from these experiences that China actually went through. But the thing is, US has the best company and that's Ripple, right? Ripple is already working with other companies which are which are having a success, which are saving costs with transactions. And see, this is this is exactly why Ripple is the one. They are going through that regulation. Once it once it's finished, guys, all the banks are going to hop on board. You have to understand that. And that is exactly why they're in the lawsuit. XRP fam, instead of saying China's advance in this thing, therefore, we have to have it. We can say what the path is in technology that will advance our financial system and cross-border payments. And can we improve that? If you ask me, XRP Ledger can fix all this. Now, here again, they talk about the problem, which is already solved, right? The thing is, they're talking about this, but they know very, very well that XRP and Ripple are in a lawsuit, right? They know that this is coming and that is why they're addressing this as a problem, but they already know the solution. Uh, question building on, on Adam's last question. 
a lot of people in Washington are making the argument that the United States needs to adopt a central bank digital currency precisely because otherwise we will fall behind China, which already has one. You mentioned in passing in your presentation that there isn't a first mover advantage in fintech, but could you address frontally that that statement that is uh, frequently heard? Sure. So I think a lot of the worry is about this foreign idea, this central bank digital currency. But one of the problems is that it's it's not really clear exactly what a central bank digital currency is. It can be many different things to different people. So to some people, it's electronic cash. That doesn't sound very threatening to the US dollar. But in another, it's central banks connecting directly on a distributed ledger system based on blockchain technology to more efficiently, they hope, move money directly between central banks with no need for all the US financial infrastructure in New York and all the intermediaries and all that. So it's a lot of different things. And because they don't really understand it and China's ahead in it, it looks like a threat. Now, the problem is we don't actually know how well this is going to work. All of these trials are in a very early stage. And I think what we're finding in a lot of experiments in the financial system today is that without calling it a CBDC, which is often just a distinction without a difference, because the money that tra that's transacted in dollars cross border is almost all digital already. It's digital already and it's already kind of central bank money. Listen, guys, so here here he goes and makes a very big mistake, right? It's not about digital uh, money. It's not just about that. He says it's already digital. It's not already digital, right? Yes, the money is moving digitally, but there is no settlement. It's pre-funding. And that's actually where the costs come from. It's, it's costing too much and people are paying for that. And that's the big difference. That's the mistake that he's making here. But the thing is, Ripple is actually already the solution but of course they're not gonna just say that because they're in a lawsuit they cannot support something which is in a lawsuit and that's the whole problem but clearly again you can see ripple is already solving this problem they're not talking about it because this he's now saying that it's already digital but he's not talking about the settlement that is not there because there is no settlement settlement takes three days because it's pre-funding. But it's banks that are moving it in these systems. You know, it's reserves. It's central bank backstopped payment systems. So whether it's a CBDC or not isn't really the important thing. So I'm arguing instead of saying China's advanced in this thing, therefore we have to have it, we can say what are what's the path of technology we want to take that's going to improve our financial system and the cross-border elements of payments, and can we improve upon that without being so focused on whether it has this four letter acronym attached to it don't forget that they are testing the digital dollar right now and that's why we still in this lawsuit but ripple partner tunes becomes way shin wechat's first payment infra infrastructure provider 1 billion plus users in china the major player alongside alipay this is insane this is big news guys tunes launches instant payouts to 1 billion plus way shin users forges unique link between china and the rest of the world you see so everyone thinks the cbdc that they're using in china is different technology i don't know what exactly they're using but you have to understand if you want to make cross-border payments there needs to be one system that interacts with all of the cbdc's and there is no other solution except for ripple guys amazon now controls 62 percent of all ethereum nodes and data centers that is a very big threat to ethereum this is one of the most biggest threats that ethereum has ever faced because if this is true and i think it's true guys 62 percent is not decentralization anymore and that was the whole point on crypto right ethereum decentralization at great risk as amazon is now hosting 62 percent of all nodes at data centers that means they are controlling the network because if they have all these nodes and if something happens, then Ethereum has a big threat, right? And that's always a very bad thing. Now, they were always saying that Ethereum is the one that's decentralized and that, that XRP is centralized. Now, you can clearly see Ripple doesn't run all the nodes. So that's why and, and Ripple cannot stop transactions or do anything on the XRP ledger. 
So there is a very big difference here, but people do not understand because they are not educated. The CBDC landscape could become fragmented globally. Listen to this. A multilateral interoperability mechanism is therefore needed to connect up CBDC networks and existing payment systems globally and thus enable CBDC transactions to flow across borders in a seamless and frictionless way. Exactly the same words that Ripple has been using for more than five years when Swift was not even talking like this, right? You can clearly see that they're adopting the technology and it's going to be used. According to Morgan, the documents that will be made public on December 5 could be one of the most revealing documents of the trial. The Ripple reply may be one of the most telling documents filed in the case to date. Ripple versus SEC lawyer explains why November 30 is crucial. Crucial why? Because that's when the judge will actually make a decision about all the amicus briefs and everything. We're going to hear a reply. And here you can see on December 5 could be one of the most revealing documents of the trial. So it's going to be very interesting still this month, guys. Be sure to stay ready. Why is SBF not arrested and instead speaking at the New York Times event with Andrew Andrews Orkin? Remember the names of the people and companies who go along with this. They know it's all a lie and are flipping Americans the bird anyway. Remember their names. Johnny Deaton has a very big point here, guys, and he's right, of course. See, they're protecting this guy. They're protecting a criminal. This is how they work. They're corrupt. We all know that right now. We have seen that. Be careful, guys, where you put your funds because don't trust exchanges. None of them. Have your have your funds on, an, on a ledger where you have the keys and don't let it go away from there. That's just the most important thing right now. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, see you next time.